Hello and welcome to another episode of Football Talk Podcast. My name's Ozzy and I'm your host for today's show. And I'm joined by a very special guest, Ensman TV. Enz, how's it going, bro? I'm good, man. Appreciate the invite, bro. Looking forward to it. Looking forward to chopping up football with yourself, man. Yeah, Hope you've man, been it's well been... as well. Thank you, bro. I hope you've been well as well. It's been a long time coming. I've been watching your content for a while. So I'm oh, glad to have it. you on the show. Glad to have you on the show. Look, we're here to do a match preview. But, you know, it's that day and age where transfers are taking over the headlines, especially on social media. And today is no different. So we have to talk about, I think, one of the main rumours today is Mohamed Salah. So according to rumours today, yeah, I let, I let the have concrete interest in Mo Salah. I would like to sign him this window. And apparently a deal has already been agreed with the player. Now, two-part question. What do you make of the rumours? And do you believe Liverpool Football Club should consider an offer if one was to be received? Because their window actually closes, I think, towards the end of September. Yeah, I think they've got another two or three weeks left. Yeah. So what, what would you say? Um, if you asked me this question at the start of the window, in terms of would I accept a bid for him, possibly because then it gives us enough time to kind of look yeah. and see what we can do. Because a player like Mo Salah, in terms of his stats, where he offers Liverpool, it, you know, it rivals none. So, you know, he, he consistently gets over 20 goals a season. So we're talking about, even with him being 31, yeah. I couldn't see us accepting nothing less than 100 million. If anything less than that, I'd be upset. But yeah. because we're now, what? We're already two games in the Premier League season. We're already on the way. Our window closes in eight days I think it is yes you can't come for my top player right now man it's not the right time bro like it needs to be something outrageous when I say outrageous I'm talking about 130 140 150 million and yeah. then I might be able to entertain a conversation but it's it's too I think it's too late in the window and the rumors about he's already agreed Mo is not that type of player in my opinion no to, to kind of let that go and leak I know his agent's always in the media doing whatever but yeah. Yeah, no, I don't know, man. That, that sounds like clickbait to me, bro. But 100%. 100%. I feel like his agent's quite good as well, where if he hears like a silly rumour, he'll tweet about it straight away. I think he did that a few weeks ago as well. Yep. So so for me, I'll be honest, I think it's BS, uh, if I'm being brutally honest. Um, mm. If Liverpool were to consider, I would be outraged because, like you said, we've got about eight days left. We're not good with conducting this sort of business anyway, especially signing new players. So to find a replacement in this kind of like short notice makes no sense to me at all whatsoever. Mm -hmm. So I know fans are being a bit outraged right now. I, I don't think that I don't even think it's a reliable source. I think it's coming from the Middle East, but that's yeah. been brewing for a while, hasn't it? Yeah. So obviously they've already said something, you know, about you know we're gonna go in for Mo. His agent came out rightly said from from you earlier. Um, yeah. He just went, no, 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 we wouldn't have signed a new deal with if we was thinking to leave. And yeah. now it's one of those things again, let's let's drag it up again and see what could happen. Because it's yeah. more like, they're like, let's test Liverpool, let's really go and test them, man. Are they saying no? Or are they saying, you know what I mean? Or it needs, does it need to be the right money? So yeah. I think it's one of those things, they're trying to test us, they're throwing things in the media, which they do because people yes. need stuff to talk about, I guess. And this now is yeah. the second time. Would he ever go there? Possibly. Look, I'm not saying he's going to stay at Liverpool forever. Yeah. Would it, would I want him to? Yeah, he's a cold player, man. It, look, he, he scores, apart from last season, he scored 19 in the league. He generally yeah. scores 20 plus goals in the Prem. And then in terms of overall outputs, man, he always offers us enough numbers. If you're going to then tell me what type of player you can go and get, but then it's Liverpool you're talking about, man. I don't know if yeah. we're going to be able to go and get someone. Are you telling me Doak is going to be the guy that takes over? I, are we saying Harvey goes out there? People are saying, so was it I could play there? I'm like, it, it doesn't sound, I don't know, man. I need uh, you to give me someone cold and then I'll be like, oh, okay, I might I might listen. But at the moment, now. But you touched on it earlier in the show. You said that if this offer had come early in the window, then we kind yeah. of plan to see who we can get. Right now, there's no one out there, for me, in my opinion, to really like, do you know what? We've got 100 plus million. Let's try and get this player, that player. There's no one available, in my opinion. Uh, you also mentioned about Mo Salah possibly leaving the future. I can see that happening probably like next summer or maybe the summer after, because um, obviously it's, it's such a like a big appeal for a player of Arab heritage to go there as well. And he's mm -hmm. he's like 
fan base is like ridiculous. So they'd love to have him because that would be like the ter- the cherry on top if they were able to get yeah. more summer there. Do you know what I mean? But um, all right, let's just say hypothetically. I, I don't want to talk about it, but let's just let's just chop it up. <laughs> of, let's say they come up with a 150 million bid, mm. and FSG. I'm going to say FSG because it's not Liverpool. FSG accept it, right? Who would you consider as a replacement in this market? So we, we were speaking on the show. We got to Savage Zabiri. Yeah. Um, I just did the show with him, K-Mac as well, big up. Yeah. And, you know, in the chats, people was throwing in like Sane. They were throwing in Cabascalia. They were throwing in who else was the other one? I think they'd said Liao as well. Cabascalia, probably the closest one. And I'd probably switch Diaz to be in a right wing and then okay. play Cabascalia that side. Or... I did jokingly said it, but I would be real. I would love to get Matoma as well and move Diaz to the right side and get Matoma. Because <laughs> yeah, I think it would be great business. I think we could probably... At the at the moment, he's probably around 50 million, maybe 60, depending on how Brighton want to operate. Yeah. I think if we wait one more season, if this was, you know, we really wanted him, that guy could be at least 80 to 100 million, bro. He's, yeah, he true. is cold. <laughs> That goal he scored on the weekend, outrageous. <laughs> but yeah, Leo was a good player as well. But yeah, yeah, I'm not, I'm not a fan of his. He's still a good player. Sane, cool. I've seen him in the Prem, seen him in the Bundesliga. Cabascalia is one I'll definitely be interested in. But it yeah. wouldn't be someone that goes and replace Mo. I think we'd have to shift no. someone in our team to go and play in Mo's position and then get someone for the left side. That's the problem right there because all the players that you mentioned, they're all left sided. They all predominantly mm. play on the left wing, so. Diaz, for me, actually can do a job on the right. I remember him playing there, I think, one of our cup finals against Chelsea, and he did a decent job. I think it was the FA Cup he did that, and he looked all right on that side. But I don't know if he can do that week in, week out. But like you said, if it was at the top of the window, for me, I've been saying it for a while. Someone I would have liked would have been Diaby, but he's gone to Villa now. So that would have been a like for like. Mm -hmm. Like a, not a replacement, but someone that can play that right wing role perfectly, but can also shift in and actually score goals, um, which is something where I think right wingers nowadays, if they're out and out wingers, they're not really chipping with the goals. So I don't know. Uh, if Liverpool do it, yeah, we'll, we'll have to do another stream because that is a suicidal if we were to accept a bid right now. But I don't think yeah. we would. Um, I don't think it, it would have to be Klopp and it, had, it has to be Mo saying he wants to leave. I don't think there's any... I, because no. we touched on this earlier as well. Mm. I don't think the owners can... I don't think they would go over Klopp and accept a bid. I think no. it would be like, Klopp, look, we know he's your player. We know how good he is for the squad. We've obviously recently given him a new deal. The money yeah. is good, but yeah. it's entirely down to you. But And I think Klopp would only let that happen if the player goes, bro, I want to leave. We saw it with Henderson. He said he wanted to leave. He just said, OK, yeah. cool. We saw it with Fab. Fab said he wanted to leave. He said, OK, cool. Obviously, yeah. he wanted to keep Milner, but the club said, nah, we ain't keeping him. <laughs> Saw it with Genie as well. He wanted to keep Genie. The club said no. So, yeah. I think they would always give him the option, but if the players say, I want to leave. Mm. But Mo's on great money already, man. I know the money inside he's cold yeah. still, but... <laughs> <laughs> like, how can you he'd be like, oh, 350k ain't enough money, bro? That's <laughs> way you see. <laughs> Plus the bonuses and all the other little things you get. Nah, man, he needs to relax, man. I know because we pay crazy bonuses. So I think we're like the leading team in the league in terms of bonuses. Mm-hmm. So um, I think you're right. And also, even if there was a bid of 150 million, I feel like that bid will still come next year, in my opinion. Like Saudi aren't going mm-hmm. nowhere. And look, they're trying to give us that big offer because they really want that guy. And I feel like in the space of 12 months, he'll still maintain that value. He's not going to, you know, be a rubbish player overnight. Like he will still be more solid at the end of the day. Even if he was like, Half of a player, for example, it will still be great enough to play. Imagine how Saudi much shirt sales would be. Uh, <laughs> records of the they can't mug us off and give us no short change like 80 mil. Nah, bro. No we know way. you guys are going to make at least 300 million through shirt sales, bro. So bro, when I say that was going for 150 and you saw his performance on the weekend, like we're not taking that kind of penny, you know? So oh, please, please tell me you saw the guy with the, the notepad. Have you seen that tweet? No, the guy with a notepad, he's like literally watching his TV and he was writing out every minute that Caicedo made a mistake. If I oh, get it, I'll send it to you. I've seen, seen that, yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's what we call cool. proper analysis. But you know, I was, I'm not gonna lie, I've been shameful about, about his performance over the weekend. Um, yeah, 
<laughs> you, as Liverpool fans, we have to take this kind of like moment where it's just like, you know what, we've got to cuss it a little bit in terms of how we were hijacked with that deal. So, like, mm. for me, you know, it is what it is in that regards. But, yeah, that's enough for Mo Salah. But I still want to stick to transfers. So, okay. rumour mills have slowed down, unfortunately, regarding us signing a CDM. Now, the latest I heard a few days ago was that Palace wanted 70 million for the Curry. And I feel like it's not official, but I feel like Liverpool might have walked away maybe thinking that's too much to acquire the player. So, and mm. for me, in my opinion, that's probably the right decision. But what do you think about the links? Should we have gone all out for a player like the Curry? And is the club <laughs> making a mis- mistake from walking away? Or do you think it's the right call? I So, firstly, I was I, I said this on my, my show as well. I, yeah. Don't don't rate him as much as everyone else rates him as a player. Don't get me wrong, yeah. he's still a good player. Yeah. But the way that everyone was talking about him, like everyone was watching him all season, I'm like, bro, come on, man. We're just <laughs> happy that we're linked with players. We watch a video clip and all of a yeah. sudden, you man are going to try and sell me this guy. Like, <laughs> yeah. I, I watched him against us. He played well against us. There's a few games that we covered and we watched like Crystal Palace against a few other teams. Played yeah. okay. But if I'm going to be honest, I didn't watch him play all season, but from what I saw, he was all right, man. But is he Liverpool quality? Maybe, but I, I didn't rate him. Everyone's telling me, nah, he's a destroyer, he does this. I'm like, but Crystal Palace didn't do great last season, bro. So yeah. if he was this destroyer, this great player, but then they tried to sell me, oh, but he got player of the season. I'm like, yeah, but, you know, Palace. Zaha was injured half the season and he yeah. was in and out. As they only started playing once um, Vieira uh-huh. left. And then mm. he was my player of the season if I was voting for a player. At least they mm. was cooking all season. So yeah. uh, who gave this, bro? Like, I'm like, who, who came? Did Hudson came in and just said, no, no, just give it to the bro. He, he's like the player. Like, bro, there was other man doing bits, bro. But look, yeah, he's an okay player. Would I mind getting him? Yeah, it's okay. We'll get him. But 70 million, bro. That's what, but that's the market now. We can't say nothing about it. You can't argue about it. That's the market now, isn't it? So yeah. Would I pay I it think- now? I think because we placed that bid for Caicedo, you know, we reveal our, our cards in the day. We're like, look, it, it clearly shows that Liverpool are ready to invest. But I have to agree with you. Like, he was a player that I was aware of last year before he signed for Palace because we were actually linked with him. So I thought, let me check him out, see how he is. Uh, I think he was actually close to signing for PSG, but that move fell through. So he was mm. a player that was highly regarded. But like you said, not for 70 million. And I feel like, it's unfortunate because the market is a bit crazy right now where a lot of the players that are being signed for high fees, they're all CDMs. Like Declan Rice went for 105, got Caicedo mm-hmm. went for 115. Uh, even over to uh, League One, you had Ugarte, who was highly linked with Liverpool. He went for around 52, 55 million, which is probably yeah. quite value. So I don't, personally, I don't think 70 million is worth the price for a player like uh, Ducure yeah. because if you're paying that kind of money, for me, he's got to be a player that's kind of a game changer. And he's not that player, in my opinion. Like, he, he might do a good job. He might be a, a destroyer. But I feel like paying 70 mil for a destroyer doesn't make sense. It's a lot of money, bro. On a, a player that we presume is a... Like, because no one's no one's giving me, like, hard evidence. They're just going on the stat reports yeah. and reading stats to me. But I'm like, <laughs> I've always gone, like, stats are cool, but I need to... You have to give me the eye test, bro. Like, you have to tell me... You watch this man, you you know, you've watched him 10, 15 games. You're like, do you know what, bro? Honestly, I know the stats are whatever, but I'm seeing him just mopping up midfielders, left, right and centre. And then I'll be like, do you know what? I'll listen to what you have to say. Let's mm-hmm. then correlate that with stats and then we'll talk about it. But man, yeah. I just telling me off the clip that he's this guy <laughs> and then you're going to read stats and apparently he's that guy. I'm like, but we know that Liverpool played poor last season. Mo wasn't that great last season. But if you look at his stats, you thought he had an outstanding season. Yeah. based on his stats, right? So stats don't always tell the bigger picture. Like, I need people to tell me the eye testing and, and where I'm mm. like, none of you guys are telling me you're watching Crystal Palace games. Like, there's a yeah. few men that I respect in the space and they'll be like, no, 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 bro, 100% we watch him. Yeah. Cool, no problem. But I'm listening to man on Twitter like, no, he's cold, he's this. I'm like, bro, you were watching Liverpool. You were watching yeah. man, when they were on. You're watching Man City. You're watching, you're watching the big teams play. You're not watching Crystal Palace. No offence. You're not yeah. watching them over Liverpool or my, your own team. Yeah. And more time we played the same time as Crystal Palace. And if Crystal Palace was playing the big team, you're not watching for Decore, bro. You're watching out for Eze. You're watching yeah. out for Elise, Elise Zaha. Yeah. 
that's the man them you're watching that for. So I don't know, man. Yeah, I feel like Twitter's a funny place because whenever we're linked to a player, it's like it just becomes that kind of like fad where everyone's just like, oh, this is the guy, this is the guy we gotta go for. But I agree with you. I'm I'm not big on stats, if I'm being honest with you. For me, it's always the artist. Like you watch the game, see how a player uh, plays, and then I feel like then you could bring the stats to kind of mm. cover the ground. Be like, oh, okay, fine, that makes sense. But but no, I agree with you. Uh, for me, he he's not the kind of player that I would have gone for. I think Caicedo made sense because obviously we've seen him for about 18 months now. You know, he, he's obviously a good player. Um, and I think one player I was also linked to was Palina, but I feel like his yeah. fee was quite high in my opinion. What did you make of Palina being linked with, with Liverpool? He's a very good player. Savage Savage talks about him a lot as well as one of yeah. his guys. Yeah. But obviously, he had a dislocated shoulder in pre-season, didn't he? So I was like, yeah. oh, that must have been off the cards then. 100%. But then they were so, talking about like 90 million, bro. I'm like, 90 million? <laughs> but then he was so mad here yeah, because his first season in the Prem, because yeah. I, I go on the Premier League website from time to time just check the stats for different random stuff. Yeah. And then I was mad in shock, bro. I'm like, this guy's made over 100 and something tackles, bro. This is madness. So then I started paying attention and I was like, yeah. oh, okay. He's a good yeah. player. Yeah. But 90 million, bro, it's mad. The, like, listen, it's not us that's setting it. It's not the clubs in terms no. of buying clubs. But the selling clubs, bro, are taking the fist, bro. If I'm being <laughs> <laughs> it's <laughs> like, season this year. <laughs> our player is 100 million. That's it. You have to take your leave. It's crazy because back in the day, you could kind of like use your sort of heritage like to muscle out teams like that where it's like, you know, what we're Liverpool. We're only placing 15 million. Bit. And then normally the player would show a bit of uproar and be like, look, I want to leave. I want to join Liverpool. But yeah, it's, it's not it's not that kind of playing for right now, unfortunately. But yeah. Do you think we'll sign a, a centre mid before the window closes? I hope so. Um... I hope so, man. One of my guys that I wanted to sign is Tarambro, and I keep trying to throw it in the universe. It's not happening, so <laughs> I just leave it. We ain't going to sign him. I've, I've, I have to just accept it. Yeah. I hope so, because I, I still feel there's one more. But then you look at the team, bro, and you're like, Thiago's on his way back. Besetic is on his way back. Yeah. And I know people say, well, Thiago is not reliable, and Besetic is a young player. But we saw from the little mini school games that we saw from him, I think he played, what, 10 games in a Prem? Or yeah. between eight to fifteen games in the prem in between that, and yeah. he was cold, man. So he he's grown he another year under the belt. He looks taller, he looks stronger. So let's see, man. Yeah, I I hope so. Though. I feel like if we do sign one, it'll be sort of a player that can play as a six or as an eight. It won't be a complete destroyer. So I know we've been linked with well, it's been quite a few weeks now with Gravenberg as well, and I think Kone as well before he got injured in the. Under 21, that would be the two type of players that I would like us to go for. And I don't think they would mm, break yeah. the bank either. So, I don't know. Fingers crossed. Uh, <laughs> I, I'll be honest. I if I'm, I don't think we will sign anyone, to be fair. I think there was even links today about a centre-back from Leverkusen. Um, is it Hincapi? Yeah. But he's got long-term injuries, so I'm not even sure what to make of that rumour, to be fair. Listen, it's... it's- the way that the transfer market works is they look at what clubs need who and then they yeah. just throw names and oh, they, yeah. throw names at your club. Oh, you're linked to this man, you're linked to that man. <laughs> if they just throw into something sticks in it, it's kind of that's the kind of job that these men are doing. But yeah, I don't know. We we do need another centre back, but that's from us. Does does Klopp think that? That's the question. Does True. the sporting director think that? Does the owners think that? It's you know what I mean? We can only speculate and go, oh, we're looking at the team. And that's if you don't rate Matip and Gomez. If you don't rate them, then you'd say, ah, oh, we definitely need one. But yeah. if you rate them as players, you'd be like, well, technically we've got four. But then people are always like, what if? You know what I mean? But we can't just live on the edge every day, man. What do you mean, <laughs> what if? Let's just hope none of our players get injured, bro. Get injured, yeah. <laughs> it's true. Plus, we still got Phillips. He hasn't even left yet, has he? So, not saying that he should I ain't still. I this guy in pre-season yet, bro. Is he not left? The, I, <laughs> you, know what? you know they were, they were posting those um those training videos when preseason started. He was on. I saw him in the background. I'm thinking, oh, he's still here. What's going on? Wait, so, wait. Preseason training picture. Is that? I've not. I need to look. Oh, yeah. I'm not paying attention. Like, in my mind, I'm like, okay, this guy's just waiting for a transfer. Yeah. So he's not been in no pictures. He ain't trained. I see. I see. I saw him in the in the gym when uh, I think Sabozlai did his first session. So I was like, oh, he's still oh, here. Yeah. But then, but then I thought. I thought the Leeds deal was kind of like a done deal uh, thing, but apparently it, it didn't go through. So 
He's still there, apparently. Hasn't played any football whatsoever. So kind of like just wasting, I would say a player in the squad, but I guess he ticks that homegrown rule and box as well, isn't it? That quarter. Yeah, does. Does. So that helps. But for me, I want players that are ready to play for the team. And I don't think he's that guy, to be honest with you. But we'll see how it goes in terms of the transfers. Uh, we might have to chop it up again after the win and see, <laughs> see what's mm. happened. But um, we'll take it from there. But let's talk about recent games. So we had a good victory against Bournemouth over the weekend, uh, 1-3-1. What did you make of our performance overall? Um, no, every time I hear about that, I just think, sorry, Savage, if you're watching, don't want to misquote you, but he was like, apart from the first 11 minutes and 17 or 18 seconds, we were <laughs> pants. But after that, now we took charge of the game. We started playing some, some good football. Um, it's just... I don't know, man. We, we look good, but there's like this. I just want us to be a bit more assertive in certain matches. And I feel yeah. like the way we started sloppy, conceding the goal, which was offside, then conceding the goal that stood. Yeah. And then we started playing. I'm like, bro, a better team could have found ourselves 2 0 down and then chasing the game on an uphill battle. And True. the first chance they had came before even a minute, I think it was. And yeah. then they scored. Um, but after that, man, I think, you know, Sabozilai, great performance. McAllister yeah. played well. Um, and then I look at, you know, Mo, you know, played okay. Then he got into the, you know, got more involved. Jota, massive improvement from the first yeah. game. To the first game, bro, he was non-existent. Diaz was cooking as always. Yeah. And then once we got a foothold in the game and we started moving the ball sharp and quick, you know what I mean? We looked good um, overall, mm -hmm. but other than that, man, I, I still feel like we're, we're missing what, just one more little piece, man. There's like another little piece of the jigsaw. I don't yeah. know what it is yet. Maybe it's Taram. I keep saying it. Maybe Klopp's listening. Um, <laughs> Fingers we just, crossed. We just need another, just another player, man, you know, just to stamp authority in the team. Mm. But we'll see what happens, man. But overall, now it was a good game, man. Good game. Took our goals well. Some, yeah. some very good performance. As I said, Jota, massive improvement. So Bozalai just seems to play eight out of ten every game. Yeah. Um, Mo was okay. Who else? Diaz was good. Robbo, massive improvement in terms of but yeah. the first game against Chelsea wasn't his fault, to be fair. It was getting done. Oh. And then yeah. Trent was asleep, man, but he woke up, so he was all right. <laughs> <laughs> what about Gakpo? Because a lot of people are coming up to me and saying that, oh, like he doesn't really suit that advanced eight role. Like, what do you make of it so far? Is it something I that you don't like it? I don't like it either, to be fair. I feel like people are like, oh. He'll get better in time, but I feel like that is not his role. That's not his position. I feel mm -hmm. like just, I think Klopp is just trying to add all the like top players in the team. So kind of like you know when you do your favorite eleven with your mates, like you try and chop and change, try and fit in players, even though it's not their natural position. I feel like that's mm -hmm. what Klopp is in real life right now. So uh, yeah, I, I don't want to see him in that eight role. To be honest with you, I feel like nope. with Endo being signed as well. Now hopefully. We've got someone there who can cover that number six position, even if we're playing a 4 3 3 or a 3 2 2 3 formation. But allow McAllister to actually play further up top because I feel like his game has kind of been held back a little bit because of other injury crises within, within the squad. Mm. Just got a couple of comments here. So, go on, man. Ravi says, Big up. Big up, Ravi. Thoughts on how Liverpool will test Newcastle overall? Um, and then he also said Gakpo West in the, in the midfield. So let's jump up in terms of Newcastle. How do we test Newcastle overall? I think, I feel it'll be the same formation. I, I was expecting Klopp to play the 3 2 2 3 formation a bit more, but I feel like he's kind of swayed back to playing 4 3 3. Trent, for me, hasn't really looked that great trying to invert in, in certain phases of the game. So so, yeah, it's, it's a funny one, to be fair. I'm intrigued to see how Endo does. I know a lot of fans were like, oh, it's a bit of an underwhelming sign. Maybe because, you know, he's not high profile enough. But mm -hmm. those type of players aren't normally supposed to be like the silky players. They're there to have one purpose, and that is to break up attacks and try and thread the balls to the other midfielders and attackers and try and make things happen. So how are you looking in terms of this game? Are you confident about how we're playing? Does Klopp need to switch it up in terms of tactics or we go again in terms of what we've done so far? I, I think he will. Well, 
I don't think he will. He'll probably go with 4 3 3. What I would want him to do is change it to a double pivot and go 4 2 3 1. Um, yeah. I'm not too sure if you caught the show. I did a, a tactical analysis show with GTV. Big up to him. Yeah. And I spoke about, because I looked at their team in, in terms of how they played against City. And they played five in midfield. They played Bruno Guimaraes in there. They played Tonali in there. And they played Joe Linton. None of them defensively was on it. And in ter- yeah. you know when you've got a player in there, like if, I, if you look at like Longstaff, right, Sean? He's yeah. got that defensive mindset in him. He's ready to make a tackle. He runs back. He's aggressive, whatever. But the other guys, they all think forward, forward, forward. So Foden and um, Alvarez was just sitting behind him the whole game. Yeah. And imagine yeah. they're playing five and there's two men just behind him. Just open up. Like, yeah, pass it into me. I'll turn and I'll run at the back line. And it happened yeah. time and time and time again. And I'm like, if they play that same midfield against us and we play with a double pivot, we would kill them because yeah. these men ain't going to defend unless Eddie. Obviously, I'm, I'm thinking the manager will go and re watch the game and go, Boys, yeah. we can't do this against Liverpool, they will kill us. Yeah, if he hasn't done that, then yeah, man, I think playing with a you know a second strike or an attacking midfielder, you know, mm. playing a double pivot, you can go endo. Or we'll get to that anyway. I don't want to give away too many names, but you can go with whoever you want in a double pivot, a 10, yeah, the striker, and then you still got your two wingers as well. And then we yeah. then we have enough defensively. And even if you want to send your wingers and send your fullbacks, you still have your two and your two sitting in front. So ideal, we got a box just waiting to cover around, if anything. So yeah, yeah, I think that's what we should do. We'll yeah, yeah. do it. I don't know. No, that's the problem now because you're on the same level as me because I've been screaming out for like a year that we should play a four-two-three-one formation because mm-hmm. I feel like the personnel that we have in our squad. It fits that formation to the T. Even now, like even one year later from what I've been saying, like you've got players like McAllister who can play in a double pivot. He played it for Brighton and yeah. did it effectively as well. Bajter is, is suited to that role. Trent can play that role. We saw that uh, towards the end of last season as well. We And Thiago did it for Bayern Munich. So we've got a lot of players that are suited for that role. And suppose that playing as a number 10, for me, just gives him that freedom to kind of explore the pitch and do what he needs to do. So... Look, I hope Klopp's listening because, boy, 4 2 three, one for me is the way forward. I feel like it gives you a balance in terms of the defence. Having a back three, I feel like there's a lot of gaps where teams will especially exploit us um, going forward, especially the stronger teams as well. So mm. uh, I've just got a question there from Ravi, actually. Question, uh, thoughts on the high line that you're playing games? Well, we've been getting exposed a lot with this high line thing. It's been going on for a long yeah. time. Highline, Highline. The goal against Chelsea, there was no room for Highline, oh. and against Bournemouth, wasn't any Highline. I don't think. I think because no. I'm looking at the goals we conceded against Bournemouth. One was a long ball. It wasn't a Highline. It was no. just a miss at the goalkeeper. Shouldn't have come out too far. And then yeah. I can't remember. I think it might have been Trent that told it past Allison, and then my man tapped yeah. it in. But the guy was offside, and then the, the, he got the rebound and scored. Uh, not sorry. Mm. Then the other guy was like more. They tried to play over the top and Robbo made a tackle, but it was like a little baby, baby foot in kind of thing. Hit Virgil, landed to the strike, and then he shot. He shot, yeah. Other than that, I don't think they got in behind us at all, really. No. I think Chelsea that... did a couple of times, but it wasn't a high line. It was no. more just good passing and getting round. Isn't it? Yeah. yeah. I feel like last season, that might have been an area where I think probably like the first six months of our season last year where we were getting exploited quite a bit in terms of the mm. highlight. But I don't think that's been the case, I think, in this year, like 2023. I feel like we try to rectify that a bit more, so we've been a bit more assured in that kind of position, especially when we played a 3-2-2-3 three, two, two, three formation. That double pivot gave us a bit more of a balance, I think, in midfield. Yeah. So we weren't really getting exploited. And they they would normally cover the fullbacks as well if if one of them bombarded um, further up the pitch. So, so yeah, I, I don't think it's an area that is a concern right now. Maybe if we played a higher opposition, it could be, but it depends on how we're set up. Right now, I don't feel like Klopp is comfortable playing that back three. I think the back four is what he's used to. Mm. Also, Robertson as well, for me, just doesn't look right in terms of a back three in the left side. Um, he's more comfortable playing as a fullback. So, remains to be seen in terms of how we set up. I think it does. It will be depending on who the opposition is. It will mm. come down to game to game rather than we're playing this formation kind of like do with us whenever we play you so yeah it's one of those ones where we'll see but I don't feel like it is a concern to be honest with you um, so what we'll do now 
we will do a combined starting 11. So let me share graphic with the viewers here. So firstly, we both want four, two, three, uh, one formation. Mm. I don't think Klopp will be doing that. So do you think he will do a four, three, three, or do you think he'll be a three, two, two, three formation from what we've played? Newcastle, I'm thinking last season we beat them twice. We did at, at the, one of those games. We actually tried the inverted yeah, work we really well. We had we the Setic in there as well last time we played. He played cold. Mm. I'm going to gamble on this one. I'm going to go the inverted. Let's go for it. Yeah, I'm going to gamble. I think he'll go inverted for this one. Okay. So I think it goes about saying Alisson uh, yeah. start in goal. So we'll just place him there. Back three, who would you go for? Uh, Robbo, definitely. Yeah, Robertson on the left. And then captain as well. Captain Marvel. Yeah, man, obviously. Captain Marvel. <laughs> and then on the right side, Konate, I don't think he has he's, he's he's available. So if he's there, you know, we should we should be fine with that regards. Now, midfield. So I don't know in terms of further up this, but I don't think Curtis Jones is available. I think he's still injured, or, or is that not the case? So obviously the report, Dave O'Cott put it up um, today as well, and he was like, and I saw a couple of the other journals, I haven't seen Curtis in training because he's got a little ankle injury. I say little, but obviously he's been he's kept him out. But I tend to kind of maybe wait till, you know, Klopp's press conference, which will be yeah. Saturday around lunchtime. And then I'm maybe he can that. shed some light on it. But as cool. we know, far as we know from today, he's yeah. not available. So he's not available. Yeah. So would you give Endo a start in this game? Yeah. Definitely. I agree. I think he's had a good should. week of training preparation. I'm sure he's he's ready, should be ready for this. Who would, you, <laughs> who would you partner in midfield with him? Um, I would go Trent, right? Iago. No, Trent, sorry. Yeah. I'm thinking about I'm thinking a different way still, but yeah, go ahead and put Trent in there. Let's put Trent in there. Yeah. Actually, wait, is he he's not injured, is he? Because he limped off against no no Ball. no full took part in full training. Okay, so he's available, thank god. Okay, yeah, and then uh, full training. McAllister's red card has that been rescinded? So he's available. Perfect. So McAllister and Sobozlai up top in the advanced. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. What have you made there? Live to Liverpool so far. Which one, McAllister or Sabalazai, or both? Both of them. Uh, McAllister, man, this guy, this guy is cold, man. I respect him. Um, the way he plays is a calmness around him. He keeps the ball well, and yeah. he doesn't panic, bro. And he just keeps us ticking. I just yeah. wish, obviously, the past two games we've had to use him in the in the six. If this guy was further forward, because watching him in preseason, man, cold, and yeah. then Sabalazai. The running power, the skill, the IQ, you know, the shooting, the part. Like, I can go on all day. Even his court, bro, I'm so impressed with his corners. In preseason, yeah. he scored so many goals from his corners. Yeah. And yeah. To, we should have obviously had a goal against Chelsea from one of his corners when obviously hit um, Jackson's hand. But I did say yeah. on my watch along, I don't think it was. But then obviously <laughs> watching it and watching it again, I'm like, oh man, if we would have got that, we could have won the game 2 1. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But it is what it is. But now nah, it's a line, man. He was a man in a match for me against um, Bournemouth and Same. against Chelsea, man. He was... Even him, I'm like, we, we haven't even unleashed him either, bro, because he's had no. to play more of a defensive yeah. role as such in a team. Um, and he hasn't been utilising the attack. And then the moment we saw this was when we went down to 10 men, put him in the midfield with him and Endo as a two because yeah. we had to play 4-4-1, four, four, I think yeah. it was, in the end. And this guy was honestly cold, man. I'm oh, so God. glad we've signed him. I, he's been a player that I've been rooting for for months. Like he's a player I've always thought in a Liverpool system, he would literally do mm. sensational things. And we're seeing glimpses of it now right now. And I, I put I said it in my last episode, I feel like he's gonna be the best summer signing in the Premier League. I feel like he's like levels above what people actually think. I don't think people actually know how good he is. Not and yet. one of his, not yet, and one of his strongest traits is actually his long term sorry long distance shooting and we haven't even seen that I know we saw it I guess when um, Jota scored obviously Jota got the rebound but he will be scoring a lot we've not had that for a long time since so a goal scoring midfielder I know Ox was kind of mm. brought in to do that but he never had the minutes to do so but I feel like we've got someone who can actually get us goals as well which is very exciting for, for Liverpool right now 
Just got a comment here from Ravi. Uh, how do you fit Harvey Elliott in the team? Um, for me, he doesn't get in the team, if I'm being brutally honest. Um, he's a player that I feel like will get games this season. Um, I think as an advanced eight rather than a right wing, I don't feel like he has that that first of acceleration when he gets a ball on, on the wings to kind of outpace a, uh, a fullback. Well, neither um, did Mares though, bro. That's the thing. That's true. But well, he had the jink, bro. Once he controlled that on that left peg and cut in on you, he can't do nothing. Shape you up, little step over, drop the shoulder, cut back. It's a problem. And that Harvey has yeah. that. But I yeah. think because we've been trying to morph him into this eight, this, I don't know, double yeah. pivot guy, whatever you want to call it, yeah. He's kind of lost his, his identity slightly. Identity. Yeah. Put him out there, man. Like, I, I, the best games I've seen Harvey play is the advanced eight in terms of, like, when he had the freedom to do what yeah. he wanted and when he played in most position. Okay. That's the two That's times cool. I was like, oh, my days, Harvey's so cold. And yeah. then when he played for Blackburn that season, yeah, he was good. killing, man. And then for yeah. Fulham, bro, you're like, who's this kid with the ponytail just cooking, man, over on that right wing? Yeah. But it's good to, I feel like he's a great player to have where he can be utilized in our system. So even in a 4 3 3, he can play on the right wing. But mm. I feel like in preseason, I feel like he was one of the most impressive players in terms of even just coming off the bench. Like he was very in, impactful in terms of how he plays. So I feel like that advanced eight suits him as well. Maybe mm. for him, it's like I can be a bit more creative in the, in the final third, but not focus too much on attacking a fullback, for example. So I feel that's like a good headache to have. I actually, when I did my prediction last week, I actually wanted him to start. I feel like he looked good when he came on against Chelsea um, when he had a, a little cameo there. So I feel like, look, I, I know a lot of Liverpool fans, I think it's just something that we've been kind of like programmed to think. Whenever we sign new players, we're like, oh, is this player going to get a chance? Like, how, where does he fit in sort of thing? But I feel like right now it's a squad game. Um, we're playing Europa League. So we've got a lot more games than we probably would have imagined uh, going into the season. But I feel like, we need to have pl two good players per position, in my opinion. And I feel mm. like he can certainly occupy those advanced eight roles. And he can also play as a deputy to Mo Salah whenever needed. And Mo Salah will need to be rested at some point um, during the season, in my opinion. So, so yes, I, I guess you're, you're Elliot fan, which is, which is good to I am a Liverpool fan, man. If you put, you put the red <laughs> shirt on, I'm a fan of Liverpool. So That's what, that's what I've been saying about Endo. Like, people are saying a lot of, Things about, and I'm like, look, he's a Liverpool player now, so you gotta support him. You know, like I don't care about his age and all that kind of stuff. He's a Liverpool player now, so let him let him do his, his thing. Another question from Ravi: How good can Kanate be at Liverpool? As good as he wants to be, bro. I think <laughs> he has all the attributes to become one of the best in the world. Facts. Um, but he's still very young. He's 23. Yeah. 23, 24 now. 23. So. Yeah. Oh, centre backs only get good. Like in terms of like learning the dark arts, these yeah. men get around around twenty eight. That's when the dark arts set in, there, and that's when the game they're like, oh, we do this. You know, yeah. we tug you here, we fall over here on the ball, pretend someone pushed us. We do this when you're in the box around twenty eight, man. <laughs> he's got time to. He's got time. Yeah, and two phase attributes, don't he? And he's learning from Virgil as well. So he's been one of the best centre backs in the last few years. So. Not not mm. bad mentors to have, um, I guess, when you're learning your trade. And you're right. A lot of defenders, they peak, I would say, around that sort of 26, 28 age, age range as well. So, so yeah, we've got we've got a top player in our hands. Um, so, mm. to say the least, front three, um, who would you go for? Here's he, – okay. Change my mind because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this on my show as well when, when I do the preview. Okay. Move Sabozalai. Into the right wing position. Okay, so let me take him out then. Yeah, please, just put him over there. So Buzz like, okay, interesting. I don't want to. I don't want to give too much away for the people because obviously he's mine <laughs> and yours, and this is what yeah, we need. Yeah. But yeah, um, I'm intrigued now. So I need to. I need to yeah, see because I want. Hey Ravi, I know you're watching. Don't give nothing away. Whoever else is watching, don't yeah, yeah, it. whoever's watching, like keep don't it. give nothing away, bro. Um, <laughs> we'll do the team, and then I'll tell you what other formation I think we can rock with as well. That okay, thing. so we'll finish off the team, and then I'll go with it. Um, okay. Where else you want to go? But yeah, that's I would put him there. 
You just put him there. So who would you play on the right side of the advanced eight position? Either Harvey or Thiago, whoever whoever is fit. Mm. So I know I know Besetic is the one that was on the bench. Thiago weren't on the bench. And I know yeah. Harvey's definitely fit. So I'll probably throw Harvey, Harvey in there. Yeah. But to your point, that. um, Ravi, uh, where does he fit in today? I think so, yeah. It's got another comment. Thoughts on how well we do when we don't have the ball. Okay. Let me just add Harvey. So, yeah, I think Harvey, I think in terms of what you're cooking right now, I feel like Harvey will probably be the better player in the advanced eight. Now, the left wing and the striker role, who would you place? Because this is always a big debate with Liverpool fans on a weekly basis. Um, Were you going striker first or left wing? You're the guest. You choose. Who would you like to start with? Let's go left wing. Has to be Diaz, right? No. Nah. No? No. Nah. Talk to me. Yang Gapo. Okay. Interesting. Gapo, okay. And up top? I say, here's the toss-up. I'm like, <laughs> you know, Newcastle pitch, the big pitch. Mm. Jota obviously stunk up the place first game, played really well in the second game against Bournemouth, scored an, an assist, even though they didn't give it to him. It was a cold yeah. cutback and a cold finish from Diaz. Yeah. I still think Darwin needs to get a mo he needs to get some minutes now, man. And if he yeah. can't start, he can't start against Bournemouth, then where where does he start, bro? So Newcastle yeah. last season he played really well. That goal, that ball from Trent, nice little control yes. and fired yes. it into the in, in, in terms of the middle of the goal. So I'm gonna go with Nunes for this one. Okay. Would you would you think because I remember the last game we played where we beat Newcastle 2-0? I think Nunes played on the left and Gakpo played in the middle. Or would you think, do you think this would be the No, win the nine now, in it? So he has to, yeah. he he has has to, to get, get the line. Okay, interesting. No, you caught me by surprise with this one. All right. But then, is... but you, okay, you see the team now, right? See yeah, when yeah. people are like, we don't have depth, we can't do this. This is a team without Jota in there, Stella in there, Thiago see? in there, Busetic in there. Yeah. It's it's Curtis as well. If you want to add him to the mix, I know some yeah. people have their, you know, their own thoughts on Curtis. He's still a cold player, man. Showed last season as well when he did get a, a run of games. So, you know, this this is a team. So here's my thought process on why I picked these players. Yeah. So after watching the game against you know Man City and Newcastle, mm. what Man City did really well, they had players that didn't lose possession too much. So Foden, Alvarez, Harlan, um, Co Kovacic as well. These guys made sure they they kept the ball, played it simple, one twos, but they never lost the ball in transition. Here's the issue: when we play Diaz and we play Mo, we lose the ball a lot of times on transition. So yeah. it's not that they're not, and I didn't even mention Diaz on the bench as well. It's not that. <laughs> It's not that I don't think they're good enough to start the game. I'm just thinking of the game on a tactical sense yeah. that Gapo holds the ball really well. You would say he's very good. He's, a, he's very efficient. He knows when to release it, when not to release it. McAllister does the same thing. You'd say Harvey at an extent as well. He holds the yeah. ball really well. He keeps it. He plays it when he needs to. So Bozzelai, we already, you know, that we can attest for that. He does that really well. Yeah. Endo, we still need to see. Trent will still be in there to do the same thing. And then you've got Nunes. He can just have that predator instinct in and around the area trying to get those goals. With McAllister and Harvey further forward, they will try and create those yeah. passes. Harvey always tries to split the line now with his passing. You've got Sabozalai there in terms of his passing, his shooting technique further forward. Even Gapo as well is naturally a left winger. But obviously, we've tried him as yeah. a false nine and we've tried him in the, in the, um, in the attacking eight. Yeah. We will retain the ball a lot better in transition, which means, in my theory and me thinking, I think we would create more chances and cause them a lot more trouble. But when you play Mo and you play Diaz, it's okay, they're going to give them the ball, they're going to run, then they're going to get tired and they're going to be out of position. Where I don't see that from Sabozalai and Gapo when they're playing in, in their natural position. Yeah. But when you play Gapo in the eight, he was always getting caught out, like positionally, defensively, he wasn't really aware, which is not his fault because he's not an eight. I know people are trying to tell me that he can play. There's special players that can play everywhere, but he is a special player. He's just not that special player. 
that can yeah. play everywhere. So play him as a false nine. I had to get used to it. I didn't like it at first, but I got used to it. But mm. as a left wing, I think he'll cook, bro. And especially when the ball goes out to him, his 1v1 yeah. with Trippier, because he's big, he's strong, that means if we get the ball in, we cross it back stick, he's going to win those headers. When it's Diaz, Diaz is going to try his skill, which is cool, no problem. But when we lose the ball, which he does a lot of times, but he does do well, don't get me wrong, we get caught in transition a lot. And I realised that when Man City played against Newcastle, Foden didn't lose the ball a lot. Grealish didn't lose the ball a lot. Alvarez didn't lose the ball a lot. And we looked at the stats as well in terms of ball recovery, in terms of their um, their passing and stuff like that. You're like, that's why they were cooking these guys, bro. Mm-hmm. They didn't lose the ball in transition and they were causing Newcastle a hell of a hell of a problem. But if we yeah. play Mo, Mo's going to try and go 1v1 with Dan Byrne. And he's probably going to win maybe one of those battles. But Dan Byrne is bigger, stronger. Yeah. Not faster, but Dan Byrne is still tall enough, got long legs. He can, you know, if he reads it well, he can probably throw his body in the way and, and stop some of the attacks. Diaz, we know, is going to go 1v1, little trickery, try and cut in, get a shot away or a pass. Yeah. But we're going to probably lose the ball a lot more. Where these guys now, Sabozala and Gapo, ball retention skills are cold, man. Yeah. That's just my theory. There's another formation I'd love to lose, but I'm thinking I'm talking too much, so... No, 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 no. I'm, 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 I'm <laughs> deep by the way you're thinking. I feel like, no, it's some valid points because that is one area where we need to, I think, improve on so far this season is our ball retention. Um, Diaz, as much as I like him, I feel like there's areas in his game where he can improve. So, for example, when we play against Chelsea, Robertson was left isolated too many times in my, for my likings. And mm. that was down to... Diaz not really tracking back, but I always felt like with Diaz, whenever he's whenever he's been a Liverpool player, I don't feel like that's his game. He doesn't, he's not a Mane, so we can't think, oh, he's a Mane replacement because Mane used to put in a shift as well as do the goods in terms of um, at the final third. But with Diaz, that's still an area he needs to play, uh, improve, I think. And then Gakpo playing that left sided eight as well, like you said, that's not his position. And you know, people always say, oh, if you can't play more positions, you're not a great player. But I feel like. There's certain players that have certain qualities, certain certain traits. Mm. And for me, it's in the attacking third. It's not to be a competitive midfielder where he needs to like break up play and stuff like that. So for me, he's a better player up top. Left wing, that is a p- position he played for PSV. So it's not nothing new to him. Mm. He's used to it. He's a he's and his delivery from that side is fantastic as well. So look, if this is a formation, I, I think there's no nothing wrong with it. I feel like it might actually do well because you've got a lot of like good combinations in terms of players in certain roles as well. And I feel like even if Sabozla and Harvey, they can interchange their Correct. roles. That's so, the idea. So that can work perfectly at the same time. And that will definitely confuse Newcastle. And with Dan Byrne playing on the left side, for me, he's naturally a centre-back. Like He's built like yeah. a centre-back, but plays on the left-hand side. So for him, we're causing chaos there for him already. So... So now look, I I do feel like we might actually play them for it. Or you've convinced me where I'm like, you know what? I feel like Klopp might do it, but who knows? You know, Klopp has a mind of his own sometimes. But mm-hmm. guys, drop a comment. Let, let us know what you think in terms of the formation. And has come here with some tactical notes in terms of how we can <laughs> deploy um, a certain style of play. And look, if this is the formation, you guys need to, you know, give us a like. You've got to re- you know, reach out to us because... This is what ends came up with. So yeah, we'll be interested to see how. And then imagine on the bench as well, Zido, as well. We got Mo on the bench, you got Diaz on the bench, yeah. you got Jota on the bench. So already you're like, if it's not working, then you can go, look, yeah. Harvey ain't really cutting it in the midfield, drops a buzzer line yeah. back there. Mo can go on. And yeah. Nunes ain't really getting in the game. Jota can come on. Yeah. Gapo, you know, or you can even look, you know what? Endo isn't having a great game. All right, drop McAllister back, put that yeah. in the in the advance eight and put Diaz on. There's so yeah. many different things and combinations yeah. you can go with, you yeah. know, or you can change the formation to a four three three if you want to as well. Trent goes back in his position, and then yeah. you still have you know Endo at the base, and you still got Harvey in the eight with McAllister. There's so many, yeah. you know, so Bozzer, I can play out on the right hand side, which you know you can. Yeah, We've got flexibility <laughs> in, the, in the squad, and for me, that's. Why I'm so pleased that we signed players like McAllister and Sabozla because they can play in numerous positions, but also, you know, we've got players in the past where, like, for example, Thiago, everyone knows left side of midfield, that's his position. Like, everyone mm-hmm. knows that 
we certain players in our team that's their favorite position. But with these guys, they can interchange and be just as effective on either side. So mm. with these type of players, we've got flexibility. We can change the formation. Not even just to start the game. We can literally change formations on or the shape of the team during the game and then do it multiple times as well. So that would definitely confuse the heck out of the opposition. Just got another comment from Ravi saying we got ends man on the bench. You know what? Uh, you know? man, if only man, if only bro. <laughs> if only I tell you that much, bro. <laughs> Most definitely. But score prediction. So what, what would you go for for this match? <laughs> After seeing and look, I know they're gonna change because I'm only going off of what I see them against Man City, and I'm yeah. going off of last season when we weren't at our best. We're the only team to beat them twice. I think I think at least three or four goals will score in this game. So I'll go. I think they'll score. They got they've got good enough players. Didn't look yeah. that way against Man City, but they've got good enough players to get a goal. If they don't get one for, from them, we would probably give them one by some sheer craziness. You know what I mean? We're the only team I've seen that tries to clear the ball and it never gets cleared, bro, sometimes. It was, it's, we clear it, hits one of our players, land to their striker. Clear it, comes back in straight away. So, yeah. so, we'll probably get one. But I need Ali to get a clean sheet, man. Uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. He's had two games where he's done really well and just not got the clean sheet. Yeah. Um, so, I'm going 4-1 Liverpool. 4-1 Liverpool. Okay. I'm going for 3-0. Um... Uh... I feel like we will get that clean sheet. I'm hoping anyway. I'm praying more than anything else. But um, I feel like the way our attackers are playing, I feel like we've finally got a good balance up top as well. And I feel like I'm excited to see Endo. Um, I know a lot of fans aren't, but I'm excited to see how he actually does in our team. Uh, Klopp has spoken very highly of him whenever he's done interviews surrounding the player. Mm -hmm. So, um, and I've, I've, Always known about him though. Like I've seen him for Stuttgart whenever they played like the big teams like Bayern or Dortmund. Watched him in the World Cup as well. Wasn't a player that stood out into my mind, like you know, Liverpool need to go crazy and get this player. But he's a efficient player, he's tenacious, which I feel like we sometimes lack in our midfield as well. And he can pass the ball, he's, he's not a bad pass of the ball. So intrigued to see how he does. Combin uh, in terms of his combination with Trent. I hope Trent is more influential on the ball. I feel like in the last couple of games he hasn't he hasn't really show, showcased that passing range that we all are familiar with. So I feel like having him in the team would be great. But yeah, I'm going for three now. I'm being optimistic here. So let's see how it goes. I've got a couple more comments here as well. Ravi, we've got more options than NSG fam, LOL. And then also had a few last questions. Big up Laz, big up Ravi. Thank you, Ravi, yeah, for coming on and uh, giving us your comments here and that concludes the show guys so thank you to everyone for tuning in if you haven't already please don't forget to like comment share and subscribe thank you to ends as always for coming on the show ends please take the platform and plug your channel let everyone know how to follow you on social media uh yeah just um join me over on twitter man i'm, I'm in the twitter verse now trying to fight against fight the good cause over there um as i said i'm a man for the people so yeah, my, my Twitter handle is there, it's just Ensman TV. And obviously my channel on YouTube is Ensman TV. So listen, come over there. But most importantly, make sure you guys are smashing a like on this video. And make sure you guys are coming across and showing Aussie some support, man. And I'll try my best to make sure I get him on my channel as well. So big up. Appreciate the invite as well, bro. Thank you as always. And we'll definitely be doing a lot more shows um, yeah. this season. I'll be intrigued to hear more about your tactical announce about this different formation so yeah definitely we'll get we might do i have to do like a tactic show review but yeah thank you as always for coming on um as always guys take care stay safe and i hope to see you all very soon goodbye